Here, Michael. I just come from the docks. Have you now? The ship's thick with uniforms, customs, coast guard. Ever on the alert. Even the FBI, by the look of them. Always a comfort. They're taking the bleeding ship apart. We'll never get the guns aboard. That's where you're wrong, Kerry. That's where they're all wrong. For all their hunting and seeking, she'll sail with the guns counting it. And one day you'll tell your sainted mother how Devlin did the trick. It's him. Run along now. It's a pity about Mr. Polly. It's a pity about us all, Kerry. And he's not the first innocent victim of war, is he? Oh, hello, Lieutenant. Come along and have a game of darts. If you don't mind, sir, I'll quit while I'm ahead. Was that Mr. Magone you was just talking to? Yes, young Kerry brings word from the booking agent. The show is about to return to the road, with myself alone, center stage, bringing truth and beauty to the multitudes and the wealth of the Incas to your humble servant. Have a drink. Joan, two ales, celebration size. Well, to tell you the truth, sir, it's sort of a celebration for me, too, so tonight the treat's on me. You just tell me when this runs out. What's your occasion, Lieutenant? The case, sir. Mr. Pauly's murder, right? I think I'm getting close. Then we'll drink to your good fortune. Here's to friendship, ripe and long. Here's to voices raised in song. Here's to a long and thirsty night. Here's to the stuff that makes it right. I got one for you, sir. Well, this is not exactly a toast. Ah, we'll waive the formalities, Lieutenant. Out with it. There once was an old man from Lyme who married three wives at a time. When asked why a third, he replied, one's absurd and two of them, sir, is a crime. <laughs> I accept that as a challenge, Lieutenant. Limericks at 20 paces. Ready, aim, fire. The limerick is furtive and mean. You must keep her in close quarantine or she sneaks to the slums and promptly becomes disorderly, drunk, and obscene. <laughs> That's a terrific limerick. Try this one, sir. A rare old bird is the pelican. His bill holds more than his belican. He can take in his beak enough food for a week. I'm damned if I know how to hell he can. <laughs> As I was drinking gin and water, and me being Corporal Riley, who should come in but the landlord's daughter? And she took my heart entirely. <laughs> Said Aristotle unto Plato, have another sweet potato. Said Plato unto Aristotle, thank you. I prefer the bottle. I don't know how you do it, sir. You never seem to run out. <laughs> What that was, Lieutenant, that was a statement of preference. Leo, my lad, the stuff's turned to water. Bring us a proper drink. You know what I was thinking about tonight, sir, driving out here to the harbor? I was thinking about that fella, Michael Dolan, and that verse about justice for the free. Let each man be paid in full. That's just enough for me. A chance remembrance, Lieutenant. There you were in that prison cell, admiring the man who wrote that on the wall. Did you ever get to meet him? I was told he was executed. For what crime, sir? This was a long time ago, Lieutenant. Well, that chance remembrance of yours, about each man being paid in full, to tell you the truth, you made me curious about Michael Dolan. So I checked him out with Scotland Yard. And it turns out that Michael Dolan... They certainly know you around this town, sir. No matter where we go, out comes your very own whiskey bottle. <laughs> Easy beginnings, prudent endings. The trick is to know when to stop. This far... And no father. Well, it's my stopping time, sir. I think I had enough. 
Is it your intention to insult the house of Devlin? Sure, and the only proper thing is to end the evening on a nectarious note. I'll make you a deal. Like you say. This far and no farther. To the drop. You were speaking of Michael Dolan, Lieutenant. It turns out he was one of those Irish terrorists. According to Scotland Yard, he was responsible for the murder of five people. One of them a woman. And there was a child, sir. I had no idea. Why, you were a terrorist yourself in those days. So I know you were very young. But there was that business with the dynamite. I'm surprised you didn't know about Mr. Dolan. The insidious old age, Lieutenant, comes sweeping in like winter before its time. It could be I heard and forgot. You didn't forget his name. You remembered it along with his poem. Well, there's the trick of memory. You retain a man's name and a bit of verse and forget the rest. But that bit of verse, when you realize that was written by a fanatic murderer, it's hard to see how you could call Mr. Dolan a philosopher. Someone to be respected. Like you said on the radio. Well, if I said it, Lieutenant, it was without realizing Mr. Dolan's true character. Not much of a man to revere, was he? No, sir. No, he certainly... Hold it. Just a minute, sir. Something wrong? That fella Dolan, he reminded me of one that I almost forgot. There once was a fella named Finnegan who escaped from a jail, so to sin again. He broke laws by the dozen. He even stole from his cousin. So the jail he broke out of, he's in again. Just one more thing.